Welcome back to Banfield. I'm Brian Enton in for Ashley tonight. We now know the cause of death for Brian Laundrie. It was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He was the only suspect in the killing of Gabby Petito. In any other investigation, his suicide would probably be the end of it. But not this one. We now have hints that other people could possibly be charged in this case. I want to bring in Lawrence Koblinski, who is a renowned forensic scientist and expert in DNA analysis and chairman of the science department at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, and Jennifer Koffendoffer, who is a retired FBI uh, special agent. Larry, I want to start with you on this one. With the announcement that Brian's death was a suicide, uh, what kind of physical evidence would they need to make that determination? We know they only found literally Brian Laundrie's bones uh, and a partial skull. How do you think they came to this conclusion? Well, I think examination of the skull, uh, the cranium in particular, would have revealed a fracture of the bone. Uh, and uh, people that uh, know a lot about gunshot uh, understand that the type of fracture that you see in that in the cranium would clearly come from gunshot. Um, we know that uh, Brian owned a pistol. Uh, the father, Chris, owned about 10 different handguns, uh, and one of them was actually missing when the police came uh, around September 13th or so, September 17th, I believe, to collect uh, it, uh, evidence from the home. They did collect all of the guns. One was missing. Uh, now, we don't know the make, the model, or the caliber, but I have a feeling the law enforcement knows very well. And it's not clear whether they found the gun at the scene uh, where the, uh, the, the bones were found. Um, you know, metal detectors can, can find shell casings, bullets, uh, and handguns. Uh, so it's just not clear whether the FBI has possession of the murder weapon or not. Uh, but you would need material like that to close the loop uh, to demonstrate that it was a suicide by gunshot, self-inflicted gunshot. Um, I mean, guns don't just walk away. Uh, it had to be there, unless, of course, somebody else murdered him, which is very, very unlikely given all of the circumstantial evidence that we already have. Yeah, and you bring up a good point, Larry, that I've been thinking about for the last 24 hours. Where is this gun? I mean, we know that this gun was missing, uh, according to, to the laundry parents. Jennifer, uh, what do you think? I mean, where do you think the gun is now? Did, did the FBI have the gun? Is it still in the swamp? What's your gut telling you? I believe it's in an evidence control room under the custody of the FBI, or possibly in an FBI laboratory getting tested to make sure it was an operable gun, that the firing pin was working, and that it had never been used in any other crimes. So I very much believe that it was recovered on that secondary search when they went back out and they were out there for several, several days. I think that's when it was recovered. The only other possibilities are it's still there or a third party has it. And I think it's very probable the FBI has it. Let me ask you this, Jennifer. Larry brought up the laundry parents, uh, Chris and Roberta. And I, I thought this was so interesting yesterday when the Petito uh, parents put out this, this statement saying basically that they've been told to be quiet because there is this possibility that other people could be involved and facing charges. Uh, obviously, our minds immediately go to Chris and Roberta laundry. Uh, Jennifer, do you think uh, that that is a real possibility at this point, that, that they could end up in trouble with the law? I do think it's a possibility. I found it very interesting, the words that were said. They said the U.S. Attorney's Office, and then they also said the prosecutors in Teton County. Now, they didn't say the FBI. Remember, the FBI is the finder of the fact. The prosecutors, the people that actually bring forth these charges in the judicial system are the prosecutors, and that's who they named. I think the laundries have possible culpability under 18 U.S.C. 3, which is accessory after the fact, and possibly 18 U.S.C. 1519, which is obstruction in terms of if they tampered with any evidence after that crime was committed. 
Larry, what do you think? I mean, we know from the Laundries family attorney, Steve Bertolino, that they had this collection of guns that you mentioned, that they, according to him, turned them all over when Brian Laundry initially went missing. But there was this one missing gun that we still don't know where it is. Uh, do you think the parents could be in legal trouble? I think they might be in trouble with respect to aiding and abetting uh, Brian Laundry evading detection, uh, running away from the, uh, the police. Um, somebody may have been helping him, most likely the parents, uh, it could have been somebody else that we don't even know about. But uh, again, you know, the likelihood is that he didn't do this alone. He may have had assistance uh, and whoever did help him um, can can be penalized, can uh, can suffer legal consequences for aiding and abetting his escape. And Jennifer, another thing I've been thinking a lot about, and I think you have too, is now that we know there was this missing gun that apparently the FBI knew about, they knew when the Laundries turned over their guns that there was one missing. And this is when Brian Laundrie was still missing. We didn't know if he was dead or alive at that point. Did the FBI, Jennifer, have some kind of obligation to, to almost alert the public, because at that point, it was, it, it was almost like there was a killer on the run that, who was armed. Do you think they should have said something? No, Brian, I, I don't think they should have said something. There are a lot of facts in this case that they have, and they've kept close to the vest as well they should. It's almost impossible to run a successful interrogate, or sorry, investigation when you have everything out in front of the public for their knowledge. Now, I understand the concern of the public, but they were doing everything in their power to find him in that reserve and everything in their power to find him at some points throughout other parts of the United States and the Appalachian Mountains and following all these leads. So they certainly did everything uh, that they possibly could to keep him uh, at the forefront of their investigation in terms of the fugitive hunt for him. It's certainly going to be interesting to see how this plays out. There's still so many questions that are left unanswered that hopefully uh, we'll, get, we'll get some sort of answer to soon. Jennifer Koffendoffer and Larry Kobolinski, uh, thank you so much for your time and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Brian. Thank you. you. Guys, have a good night. Okay, turning now to the search. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.